Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. I'm Tina. Today, I want to do this really fun technique. Um, and I had to do a couple of things to figure out how to get it to work the best. But it's stamping on foils. So on your gold or your silver foils, or if you have different colors of foils. Now, I thought of this for holiday cards, obviously, because, you know, holiday cards are shiny and glimmery. But I did figure out it works just as great for everyday cards. I'm going to try to get these to show up on film, but because they're shiny, it, you know, it's kind of hard to see. Here's one I did. And here's another one. Just kind of, it just really adds a different kind of wow to your image. I'm going to show you today how you can create some light rays doing this. You can use these techniques on regular cardstock too. There is a trick to um, stamping on non-porous papers like foils. Okay, if you were to try to use your regular Stampin' Up! inks other than the white, um, it doesn't dry. Okay. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and some inks you can use in order to do this technique. Here's one that's just kind of subtle. Got some fish in the waters. This one I did in some different metallic colors. Here's a nice subtle one. Now something like this I think would look fabulous for a holiday card. Okay. Here's one done on some blue foils. Now use what foils you have on hand. Um, Stampin' Up! does carry the gold, the silver, and the copper. Okay, We do have some other ones that retired last year that I think are going to be absolutely fabulous. And it's this kind of holographic look. I can't wait to make something with that one. Then I went to the craft store. I was running low on my Stampin' Up! Gold, and I'm waiting for it to arrive. So I thought, you know what, I'll just run down, grab a piece of gold cardstock, or foil. What I found, ooh, I was in happiness. I found a packet of different foils. And it was only like, I don't know, $6, and then if you use your 20% uh, off Michaels, or I get a military discount because I'm a veteran, um, which I think is 20% off my order. So I used that. But I found an assortment pack. It, it's kind of an interesting uh, foil. As you see, it kind of rolls up a little bit, but I can just flatten that out in its book. But it came in all different colors. We got golds. We got pinks. You know, this pink or this, uh, I'm going to say it's kind of a fuchsia. Stamp some flowers in a greeting on that. You are good to go. We got some blues. We got some greens. Um, and then, of course, it had the regular coppers and silvers. So, you know, just use what you have on hand. But I wanted to show you that these can be done without, you know, it doesn't have to be a holiday to be a shiny card. So let's pick a color. I really liked... Um, the blue foil just as a something something I did have this holographic kind of ocean blue one which would be good for what I want to make you today but I'll, I'll make it and then I'll put several photos down below and I'm going to show you how to make some sun rays and things like that today so grab a piece of foil let's let's see I wish I were live right now I'd ask you what color you want to use but I'm thinking I wanted to try, I want to try the blue for the one I'm going to do. And I'm going to use the stamp set called Seascape. Uh, you've also got some nice thoughts here you could use. Now for the light rays or the moon like I did in a few of these, you've got this awesome after the storm set. You can use the rays and the clouds from this, and you'll see it, it, it really works great. And you've also got the moon from To the Moon. I will put links to all these in my store uh, down below in the uh, remarks so that you have them. 
but let's jump in and I want to start out by remember I told you you can't really use Stampin' Up inks. Stampin' Up inks are not um, pigmented so when you stamp on it it's not going to dry. Now you could always uh, emboss on this foil which I'm sure you've done but when I'm doing scenes like these that's a whole lot of embossing. Okay so I wanted to figure out a way I could just stamp on my foils and go. So there, here's some inks you can use. So of course you can use Stazon. Stazon is a permanent uh, Sullivan ink that will uh, stamp right away and it'll also dry right away. Okay. Some of these I wanted to be able to maneuver the ink a little bit to create clouds and shadows and stuff. So I did find that Stampin' Up's white ink is a pigmented ink and it will work. You can also use Versafine. Versafine is a black ink that is also pigmented. You can use that. But what we're going to use today is I found these brilliant inks. Okay, they're archival inks and they're pigmented inks. And I've got the I went ahead and got the silver, the gold, got the regular archival black, and I've got some white. And if you didn't want to buy these full-size pads, you don't think you're going to be doing this very often, I did find, and I'll put a link to them, on Amazon you can get these little dewdrop um, mini pads of these. And I think this whole pack that's got gold, it's got the platinum, it's, um, it's got the silver, and that looks like, sorry, I can't read it. Oh, it's copper. And I got this whole pack of these little inks. I'm going to say $11 and change on Amazon. No more than $12. So they're good. They're handy. They're small. I'll put a link below for you if you're interested. So what I did find is that these pigment inks work the best for this. You can work them a little. They do dry. Now you can heat set it just a little bit without you know ruining your foil and it'll dry it but what I would suggest which I found is give this once you make your card give it a couple days to dry before you um, mail it or anything and it will dry it doesn't rub off okay so I would you know you're gonna wonder wow that's really kind of wet it is but it will dry I guarantee it so let's jump in and let's do a little oceanscape. And there's a couple of things I created um, to use as masks. Now you can do this with your regular masks. How pretty would that be? Just do some different colors, lay a mask on there. I also created myself a light ray stencil. All I did is stick it in my cutter and cut myself a little stencil. So that I can just kind of use it to make my light rays. If you don't want to do that, all you'll need to do is just lay your paper and make your light rays. But since I do this so much, I just made myself a little stencil. I also made myself a little moon stencil or sun stencil. I put one bigger circle, one smaller circle. Make your own stencils. So there you go. Let's do a scene in the ocean where the light rays are coming down over the little fish. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Let's go with it. So I think what I want to use on this one, we definitely want to use some whites and we're going to make some light rays. So let's pull that in. Now, to put this on your card for sponging, I tried a couple different things so that I could tell you how it turned out for me. I tried a sponge a regular stamp and sponge. I tried blender brushes and I tried daubers. All of which kind of work, but absolutely nothing worked better than regular old cotton balls. It seems to hold the ink easier and gives you a, a smoother surface of what we're doing. So let's grab our white. 
and we're going to make some light rays go coming down off the surface of the water and it's going to shine on our coral and our fish so to start off i'm just going to put my light ray here and i'm just going to go a little bit diagonal here start at my corner grab my cotton ball and just oops ink it up and then just dab it on I've done this so much I probably need to buy the re-inkers for this pad so I can speed it up but let, let's do a little bit of this so you can see what it looks like Now, it doesn't look like it did much, did it? But look when you lift it. How pretty is that? And then since my stencil wasn't quite long enough, I can just carry it down a little bit. And remember, that's going to be wet. So this is one of those let's get inky on our finger techniques. You know, I don't mind that. But you might, you know, if you want, you're not a big fan of getting ink on yourself maybe wear a little pair of gloves or something so now I'm going to shift my light beam just a little bit and you can always go back over it if you want it darker and you know sometimes I'll make my more concentrated color toward the top because that's where the brightest of the sun is coming through the water. Now, when we go to stamp on this, maybe go grab your stamparatus and follow along. I did um, do it with and without my stamparatus. Which is fine, but um, you are stamping on the foil, so sometimes it doesn't do a clear stamp right away. You'll see. So you can stamp it multiple times. But use what you have. You know, you could do some really pretty, uh, you know, you just stamp a few trees on it, do a little highlighting. Good to go. And I'm, you know, I like that shiny look. I really do. Especially come holiday card time and... You'll be seeing me doing this technique on my holiday cards. But I, I just couldn't wait till the holidays. I had to just share it with you because I've really got a kick out of doing it. So I'm going to add just, I'm going to use the edge of one and just in between there maybe add just a little bit of accent. Not real dark. See there? And just add another little, I'm adding a lighter beam in between just along one edge of my stencil let's hit that one a little bit better there kind of gives you that two-toned effect And now if you make a mistake, the cool thing about this technique, if you make a mistake, guess what? You can take a rag and wipe that off. Take a baby wipe, a damn baby wipe, and it'll wipe right off there. Really, it does. It's funny. You can. <laughs> I like when you can correct something you've done without, you know, losing the whole piece of paper. So I'm going to go right up here at the top, and I'm just going to, Kind of fill that in a little bit as where the main part of the light is coming through. And feel free to try your different colors. Maybe the silver on here would look really good or even the gold. So let me uh, go ahead and let's stamp some images on it so you can see how it does. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just use my graphite black. And I'm going to, now be careful, that's going to be wet. So you kind of get a little bit of ink on you. Just 
try to grab it in the spots without the ink. I'm going to put my magnet where I don't have ink. Kind of getting a glare off of this, aren't you? And I, I wish there was a way I could not do it, but it's it's foil. Let me see if zooming in helps. Let's see, maybe that helped it just a little bit. So let me put this one here. Let's add, let's add some seaweed and some coral here. So I think what I'll do, you know what, I think I'm going to make that coral in gold. Let's go ahead and try that. So, I don't know if you guys saw my latest post. I'm going to start trying to do some Facebook or some YouTube live videos. I've always kind of did recorded videos. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm a sailor. I'm a biker. And sometimes that little tiny filter from my head to my mouth malfunctions. And I've always been afraid of doing that on live film. So, but, you know, I can only be me. So I want to do some live because I can get more videos out. I have some new plans for some video series, some tutorial series, and I'm real excited to share them with you. Okay, so we stamped that both in gold. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that neat? Okay. Now, on this pigment ink, um, if you get it right away, it'll wipe right off your stamp. If not, I would suggest getting yourself the stamp cleaning pad. Or if you have stays on to clean your stamps, it'll take it right off. So we've got a little bit of coral there. Let's add some seaweed. Maybe for giggles, let's see how the seaweed looks stamped in the silver. Oh, I like that. I'm going to stamp that one more time because remember I told you it's foil so it kind of lifts a little bit. And if you, when you stamp it down, if you don't press quite as hard, just kind of let it touch the paper so that the ink will transfer. You get more of a transfer there. See what I mean? So let's move that over a little bit. Get a little more seaweed in here. Now you can also do, um, I don't see what the technique would be called. You could ink up your piece and then with a clean, dry stamp, stamp over it and it'll pick up the ink so it'll be reversed. It'd be like the, uh, I don't know if I've done a tutorial on soot stamping. They call it soot stamping where you uh, stamp and remove ink off a space. Maybe I'll do one of those. If I don't have it in my repertoire of tutorials, I think soot, soot stamping. It used to be, I call it soot stamping with ink, but it used to be where people would take um, like foils or uh, photo paper and they would um, actually use a candle and create that black sooty residue on them and then you stamp on it and it lifts that residue. It's a neat technique. Maybe I'll uh, put it together. But when I start doing these live videos and things, 
I would love nothing more than for you to let me know on my Facebook or my website what kind of tutorials you would like to see. I have a book that's easily, easily two and a half inches thick of tutorials. So if there's something that's not in my technique ring that you have or isn't on my Technique Tuesday video series, let me know. I'll do a video on it. I got I love doing techniques. Anything technique and I'm happy. So anyway, got off track there, squirrel. Alright. Let's add some fishies to here. I think I'm gonna try them in the black just to see how they look. So let's add a few fishies here. See how it kind of leaves a little blank spot there? You can um, stamp it again. Like I said, try to try to just touch the paper with it. Okay, well let's see what we could use to fill that in. We could probably use our microns. Let's see if that works. Oh, you know what we could do? I'll show you a better idea. You have a, a um, Q-tip. Okay, dip it in your black ink, and then just touch your fish. Fills it right in. Looky there. Now I use. I'm going to show you what I use Q-tips for normally uh, when I'm doing uh, skies or or oceans or something that's got lights and stars or reflections. Let's add another little set of fish here. This would be a really cute background if you took your uh, oh what set is it? There's a set that has a really cool seahorse in it. See if I can remember to link it down below. So I'm going to take my little Q-tip. Q-tip, dip it in the black ink. And just fill in my fishy here. Okay, look at that. We need a few more little accents. What do we want to do here? I'm going to pop that a little bit, but I really love the way it looks off the hand all by itself. I'll wipe this off a little. Why don't we add some bubbles? Let's go ahead and do those in the silver. really cute I like that a lot you know what this is how I create I, I, I I'm not really good at just like planning stuff out I just kind of start stamping and go with it you know but by the time I do a video for you guys I've already done several different layouts and try to come up with what I want but in reality this is kind of all I do I play and then just add or remove things or whatever to come up with what I like or what I think looks cool. So add one more set of bubbles here. So I kind of like the way the silver shows up on this better. I'll bring it up here to the camera here in a minute. like that okay and something else you can do I'll show you another technique to add some accents and stuff is you can take your um, stamping up your white uh, 
ink and the you know the refill bottle you buy with it take a little bit of that refill bottle add it to a little pan, pan or tray this one's dried up because I was using it but you could just reactivate it with some water let's try that then I'm gonna grab an old toothbrush which I always keep on hand okay I think I need to add some white to that it's kind of dry let me put some on it real quick okay I thought it would reactivate but it didn't I mean it will if you soak it but I'm just gonna add I'm gonna dilute it really well that little refill so we're gonna put a little bit on our paintbrush and you can either tap your finger oops got that one a little rough that's okay just pick it up you can tap your finger and put little splatters on it or just take and use your finger to splatter a little and add little tiny splatters of white ink see there that's just going to add some really nice accent in there. Give you scattered sizes of splatter. And see there? It's kind of hard to show in the camera because of the lighting, but see the little white splatters? And you can take one of your... Your... Um, q-tips and you can kind of blur out a couple so you're just going to add a little it kind of makes it that's how I do stars too I think I've showed you how I do stars so we're just going to add a few little kind of blurry ones on there this kind of looks like it's glowing Okay, set that aside. I want to highlight that top corner just a little bit more with some white. Okay. Now, what do we want for a greeting? Well, we have, we have these inspired thoughts, which has got some amazing stuff in it. Or, let's see, what do we got right in here? Well, we could do that one. Let's just do the greeting that came in here. Oh, here's your seahorse. It's right in here. So you could cut out the seahorse or even the little fishies. And I would do them in maybe gold or silver and just add them on there. I, I should have thought of that before I started the video. So now I'm just going to line this up. So now this is still a little bit wet or it's, you know, like I said, it could take up to two days depending on how thick you do your sponging so before you handle it a lot just set it aside make some others you know and then just let it dry I'm gonna do the greeting in black I was doing uh, one of my cards I did the greeting on a separate piece and popped it up on my card and my uh, creative critic which is my husband he's, he's my best creative critic I mean when I make stuff you know how sometimes you just look at it and go what is wrong with this well he'll tell me and he said he didn't like 
a popped up greeting or anything that would hide what you're doing here. He said it kind of just took from the technique. And I guess he was right. I mean, I, you could do one like I did here. This was one of my first ones I kind of messed up. Uh, see, I actually uh, smeared it before it was dry, but it's dry now. I did a vellum greeting over the top. Now, wouldn't that just make a really awesome Christmas card? And here's the blurred that I do with the Q-tip. That's kind of what he's talking about, to make your stars or your reflections look bright or glowing. So let's grab this. I'm going to hit it with a heat tool just real quick. going to be a little bit wet but I wanted to dry it enough that I could at least mount it onto my card base and then we're going to add a couple more little accents to it and voila we're good to go let me move this stamp out of the way see how it kind of stains it a little it's like stays on so just use your um Stamp cleaning pad or your stays on when you're done. Clean up your stamp real nice. Let me move this. Now I think what I'll do is I'm just going to mount it on a piece of Pacific Point. Because I think that will give it a nice enough accent. You could also do a real thin black mat which would pull out your greeting and your fish should we do that should we see how that looks a real thin black mat well i'm torn i kind of like it like this but you could do it i would i would consider it, it let's go ahead and mount that i'm going to mount it straight down So as you can see with this technique, it's got endless ideas. I mean, you could just stamp like some flowers and or some of your, you know, like two-step stamps. Oops, can't get that on there straight. Also mounting it, it'll, it'll help it flatten out after you've used the heat tool on it. So let's grab some little bling bling. Find my tool here. And let's add a couple little tiny bling blings that'll work as bubbles also. Try not to touch it too much while it's wet. Get it glued down real well. But isn't that neat? I mean, it's kind of really hard to show on camera because of the lighting. But it, it's got a lot of dimension to it. Okay? And you can um, kind of just go crazy. Some of my favorite ones, though, is I liked the gold and white on gold. That looks good. This one is silver with gold and white, and that one came out really nice. I'll try to get better image of these than what is showing in the lights of my camera. Okay, this is one of my favorite type of scapes to do is, is lights through the trees. And what I did on this one, I did my sun rays, and I did the clouds stamped my trees in the black and then took this the beam stencil again and went 
over a couple of them. So it kind of looks like the rays are on top of and behind your forest. Okay. This one, just fun with the campology set. Little sunrise, sunset on the beach or on the lake and little cabin and some trees. This one, I did use the um, uh, after the storm to create my clouds there and then just added some, took a white gel pen, added some highlights to my lake and then sponged the sun and just a little bit of highlight of the sun reflecting on the lake. This is the one my husband's not really sure about having the greeting over the top. He said he doesn't like the trees hidden. What do you think? All right. And here's one done with those same tree kind of layout. And I did use, this is what the rays turned out using this one. Okay. I used these rays and the gold ink. It comes out just as well as doing it yourself. Okay. And did the same thing once the trees were, uh, Stamped, I did a couple of the beams going over the tops of the trees. Used a black gel marker and just added a couple birds to it. So as you see, it's a fun technique. And, you know, use whatever foil you have. Any colors will work. But it just adds that extra kind of shimmer depth to your projects. And then this one, I did use the vellum to do the greeting. Okay. A little bit of highlight on the trees where the moon is shining. So that's it. That's all I had for you today. And so basically to stamp on foils, you need pigment inks. Okay. They will dry on a non-porous surface. Okay. Stays on your regular Stampin' Up! inks may not dry. You can emboss on foil if you want to. But remember, if you're doing a little bit too much embossing, it can um, kind of tear apart the foil. So if you're doing a whole lot of embossing, just be real careful. Do it on low, melt it slow. And that's it. That's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And you go try this technique. It's a lot of fun. And I hope you have a very happy Stampin' Day. Bye-bye.